Hey guys. So, I don't have a huge amount of time right now because I've been watching both my kids lately all by myself. And it's been a little bit of a ruckus. Not too bad though, but still, it's pretty busy. So, I'll get straight to the point. So, remember those uh, strange, really strong, long period tremors that were felt from Alaska to Virginia in my last video, Scary Long Period Tremors? Well, it wasn't my last video, but you know what I mean. Well, USGS never gave me a straight answer, and so I sent them another email back. They still haven't replied to the second email I sent them. Not a shock. And I still have not heard a peep from over a dozen volcanologists. Not even an email trying to debunk my claims, which is very odd. I have double checked my data, even triple checked, and it really was the same ground vibration fall from Alaska to Virginia. You know, I was thinking maybe the whole American Craton was moving. That, that's a big possibility, because I doubt a volcanic tremor can be felt over that large of a distance. I mean, half the country would have to be a volcano for that to happen. Well, I thought the tremors would happen again, but they have not occurred since November 28th. So I was wrong about that, thank God. Now see here, these are the locations of the seismograms I'm going to be showing today in this video. A new tremor seems to have appeared about 6 or 7 hours ago. It is a low amplitude, low frequency tremor that has now been confirmed over the majority of the Montana Seismic Network, which is this over here. I mean, th these are just a couple that I'm going to show that show a large activity. These are the ones that show the most activity out of all of them. Remember, never, ever, ever take my word for it. Always, always do some digging of your own. All right, here's Red Lodge, Montana, short period vertical, December 14th, 2017. And just in case anyone is confused as to what I am trying to show, it is this right here. You see these jagged edges? Let's go all the way up. Notice how these lines were a little bit thin. I mean, there's some micro here, a little background noise. But notice as we get closer down here, as the day rolls by, notice how they start getting more jagged and more pronounced. Well, those are no longer micro -seisms. Up here, yes, you know, maybe wind, car driving by, you know, who knows. But I doubt Red Lodge can be affected by wind because it's enclosed. It's in an enclosed space. It's like in a shed or something like that. It's definitely not outdoors. You see that? These are what I'm talking about. These jagged edges right here. The up and down movement. You know, micro are normal on all graphs. But this monitor, again, I say, is indoors and cannot be affected by weather. Plus, as you will see... This low-frequency vibration is felt across the entire region. The entire region being felt strongest at Red Lodge, Montana, and Chrome Mountain, Montana. And also Black Pine Ridge was showing some strong ones as well. Look at that right there. I mean, that, that looks exactly like a harmonic tremor. I'm sorry to say it, but it really does. Uh, no doubt about it. It is definitely something volcanic going on here. And it seems that this tremor started to gain intensity around 615 UTC, but that's not the part I'm worried about. It started getting strongest around this time. Let's say maybe 1315 around there. You notice that? See? Smaller, bigger. Smaller, bigger. And also, just for the record, all the falling graphs I'm going to be showing is for December 14th UTC. All the graphs, all the falling graphs I'm showing are for December 14th. All right, here is Six Mile Mountain in Montana. And if you guys have any questions as to where these graphs are located, go back to the beginning of the video where I just showed the locations on Google Earth. And you know, normal micro -seisms. It looks like there's a few low frequency tremors here and there. But notice, right around 615, they start getting stronger. And then down here, look at that. See the jagged up and down? Up and down, up and down, look at that. That looks just like the Mount St. Helens Harmonic Tremor. Just like it in every way. And you see again, around the same time, around 1315, I'm going to say, around that time it started getting thicker and more pronounced. Although the past six hours have been the strongest on all graphs. So about, yeah, so about 13 to 1415 UTC, right around this area, that's when it all started getting stronger on every single graph that I'm about to show. And a lot of them show the same thing. So if it's showing an increase of activity during the same time on each graph, it seems like it's picking up the same vibration. It's not just a micro -seism. <clears throat> And this is as of 4 p.m. Pacific time, which is 0000 UTC for December 15th. 
Think of this. This is very funny. UTC is universal time code. It's the same exact time. There's no such thing as time zones with universal time. It's the same exact time all around the world. And Seismic Data uses it a lot because it's a lot easier to correlate data with the UTC time code. And also, there is no such thing as daylight savings time for UTC. So, during this past daylight savings time, I noticed a change in the timing of the graphs. I'm like, what the hell happened? What'd they do? Apparently, right now, 0 UTC is 4 p.m. Pacific time. But before the most recent daylight savings time, it was 5 p.m. Pacific time. So right now, 0 UTC is 4 p.m. Pacific time. Next time daylight savings happens for us, 0 UTC is going to be 5 p.m. Pacific time. So hopefully that helps a little bit because I got very confused when I first learned about that. All right, here's Mount Humbug. Notice normal microseisms, you know, little low frequency tremor here and there. But. Notice around this time again, around 1315, the same low frequency, low amplitude tremor is shown here as well with the past six hours or so showing the strongest activity, especially down here. Look at that right there. That is definitely a harmonic tremor. I mean, if it's not a harmonic tremor, then this is some brand new discovery that no one's ever heard of before that looks exactly like harmonic tremor. And it all increases on, at the same time on each graph, showing it is correlated with each other. Here is Barton Gulch showing the same exact activity with increasing intensity at the same time as the other graphs showing that these are not normal microseisms. They cannot be because notice again around 1315 that is when they start to get quote unquote more jagged and bold if you know what I mean. Especially right here. Look at that bottom line right here. Wow. I mean if that's not harmonic tremor I don't know what it is. You know, and there's a lot of people online saying, oh, harmonic tremor, harmonic tremor, harmonic tremor. And some people on YouTube saying the same news over and over, like the Yellowstone roads are melting, which happened years, a few years ago, like 2014 or something like that. And they're still re-uploading the same old news, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, Mary Greeley is like the only other person on YouTube who actually talks about facts about Yellowstone. Everybody else is just, I don't know. You know, I love Dutch Ince and Mary Greeley, you know. Especially with Dutch Ince, he talked about uh, some volcanoes erupting off our coast, possibly, off the coast of California and Oregon. Okay, here is Black Pine Ridge. Yeah, guys, uh, these are pretty darn concerning. Do you see the rhythmic pattern? Do you see that? Remember, starting around 1315? See? You can kind of see them up here too, you know, because they've been going on for a few days now. There has been a slight increase in low frequency tremors. And I didn't report on it because, you know, I don't have that much time to. And it wasn't as concerning as these down here. Notice how they got a lot stronger. And look at that right there. You know, this is exactly what harmonic tremor would look like. So if magma is rising, where are the earthquakes? Well, I believe the previous large swarm at Soda Springs and at Yellowstone created vents for magma to freely rise through. Therefore, if that is true, this would allow magma to rise without breaking free more rock. Because, you know, in, in Yellowstone law, the swarms are from magma breaking away rocks. And that's what the earthquakes are from. Harmonic tremor is from magma rising, most likely. And earthquakes are caused by either fault slipping or rocks breaking up underground. Also, guys, I, uh, I would like you to go down the resources in the description box and find Montana Tech and go to Stillwater Mine, STMT Stillwater Mine, EHG, December 12, 2017, also the days before and the days after this. I have no idea what is going on here. It, it does not show on any other seismographs, but this is very, very weird. Look at the rhythm. You see, it happens like every two or three minutes or something like that. I have no idea what's going on here, and if you go back... You know, it happened today, too. And the day that it started was, was this day. Normal, notice the normal activity up here? That all of a sudden, something happened. I don't know what. But December 2nd, 2017 is when those weird signals at Stillwater Mine appeared. And I really encourage you guys to dig into this as well. Because I have no idea what's going on here. I don't know if this graph is inside the mine or on top of the mine. And this does not look like normal mining to me. And if this is normal mining, what in the living hell are they doing down there? 
Seriously, because those are some strong vibrations. Okay, so this is Chrome Mountain. Remember how I said these uh, low frequency tremors have been going on for a few days now? Very small though. They're, they're mainly very small and in the background and you know, I noticed them, but I didn't, I wasn't that concerned about them. But let's go down here. Remember around 1315 it increased on the other graphs. Notice how the intensity increased as well here. Yeah, wow. Those are some quite concerning tremors. I mean, I, I, I'm i not joking. I mean, on a normal day, these would barely, barely even show. I mean, it'd just be straight lines. Microseisms are normal. These are not microseisms. I say again, because they pick up on every single graph. And I do have to say the majority of the graphs on the Montana Tech Network did pick this up. I am only showing the graphs that showed it the strongest. I mean, look at that right there. Can people deny that this is a harmonic tremor? Because it really, really, really looks like one. I'm not saying it is. I'm not a professional. But it really looks like magma intrusion. I mean, something is definitely going on. I really hope this is not harmonic tremor because this would be a very bad sign. I mean, this has happened before in the few past few months. This has happened. But to my knowledge, not this strong. That's only to my knowledge. Especially at Chrome Mountain. I mean, you know, this is, look at this. Remember again, around 1315 increased? I have to say, I do advise anyone living right next to the Yellowstone Caldera or even in Southern California to please, please leave right now until the recent activity calms down. I mean, again, like, wow. I'm pretty much speechless seeing tremors this strong with this much of a rhythmic pattern. I mean, the definition of a harmonic tremor is a rhythmic sustained release of seismic and infrasonic energy that carries a rhythm, and it usually has a low frequency and a low amplitude, and that is what this is. By every definition, this is harmonic tremor. By every definition. All right, here is Moose Ponds, Wyoming. Again, same date, December 14th. And you notice, here, let me zoom in. And you notice it shows the same exact activity. You remember around 1315, around that time, starts getting more intense. Look at that. See those jagged edges? I believe the monitor here is a little bit more sensitive than the surrounding monitors. Because I believe the epicenter for this low-frequency tremor is somewhere between Red Lodge, Montana and Mount Humbug. Because it showed the strongest on these right here in MOOW, which is Moose Ponds, Wyoming. See, there's Yellowstone Lake right there. I believe the epicenter is somewhere right here, which is where a lot of the activity has been occurring. You know, I think if there's going to be a new eruption of Yellowstone, it's definitely going to be in this area. Definitely. And here is Victor, Montana. Notice the microseisms here, you know, little jagged edges up and down, up and down. That's usually, you know, wind, background noise, whatever. But then you go down here to 1315, notice the jagged edges start increasing right here. And look at that. Yes, it showed here in Victor, Montana as well. And you can definitely tell that it's not microseisms because remember, it all starts around this time, around 1315. And it increases, and each graph showed that, showing that each graph is picking up the same exact activity or ground vi vibration or whatever this is. I am positive this is related to magma. I am fairly positive that this is definitely some type of harmonic tremor. All right, guys. So remember how Rapid City, the graph for Rapid City, South Dakota is over here? Yellowstone's all the way over here. Well, guess what? Remember, this is the same date, December 14th. And let's go to 1315. And look at that. See the jagged edges up and down, up and down? Look at that. And down here as well. Look at how strong it is. It picked up the same activity, increasing at the same time at Rapid City, South Dakota. Over a large area. I mean, I think that's about, what, 200, 300 miles away from Yellowstone? If even more. But it shows the same activity on Rapid City, South Dakota. It showed that far. I don't know how, but it did because every time this low-frequency tremor appears at Yellowstone, Rapid City shows the same activity increasing and decreasing at the same times as the other monitors in the Yellowstone area, showing it picked up the same vibration from the ground. Whatever this is, which I do believe is harmonic tremor, 
but I'm no professional, so I don't know exactly for sure. But you can definitely see around this time period an obvious increase on all of the graphs, showing that this isn't just a coincidence. This isn't just wind. This isn't just cars. This isn't, you know, a bunch of bison playing football. You know, this is definitely something going on underground. Yeah, we got a little venting going on. This was just a quick rundown on the low frequency event that is currently taking place at Yellowstone. I had to make this video as quickly as possible with most of the video being made with my six month old in my arms. <laughs> I am continuing to look into this and will provide more info when I'm able to. I suggest that all of you who are willing to, to go down into the resources in the description box below and look for Montana Tech and check out these graphs for yourself. Now remember, if you choose to do so, in order to determine if a long vibration is coming from underground, remember, you must check the time of increased activity and the time of decreased activity, and check if its timing coincides with the other seismographs of your choosing. That is how you tell if something is truly coming from the ground or if it's surface noise. I will try to upload an update video about this in the next day or two because it's getting a little concerning. So, God bless everyone, and remember, never take my word for it. Always attempt to disprove, without bias, of course, everything you come across. Because seriously, that is how people get to the truth. That is how I got to the truth. You attempt to disprove things. Always, always attempt to disprove everything you come across, no matter what you think it is. Because eventually, in trying to disprove that, you will come across the truth. And I am only here for the truth. I love the truth, and, you know, the truth is in Jesus Christ. Well, see you guys later, and God bless.